Shrek. Yeah? Oh, sorry. Great soup, Mrs. Q. Mmm. <laughs> no, no, no. Darling. Oh! <laughs> What's it like having Shrek as a son-in-law? Let's learn English with Shrek's first meetup with his in-laws during their first family dinner. First, we'll watch part of the clip with subtitles. Uh. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Better out than in, I always say, eh, Fiona? <laughs> 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 That's good. <laughs> uh. I guess not. What do you mean not on the list? Don't tell me you don't know who I am. Hey! What's happening, everybody? Thanks for waiting. You know, I had the hardest time finding this place. No, no! Bad donkey, bad, down! No, 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 Dad, Dad, it's all right, it's all right. He's with us. He helped rescue me from the dragon. Yep, that's me, the noble Steve. Hey, waiter, how about a bowl for the Steve? Oh, boy. Um, Shrek. Yeah? Oh, sorry. Great soup, Mrs. Q. Mmm. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh! <laughs> mm, yeah. So, Fiona, tell us about where you live. Well, Shrek owns his own land. <laughs> Don't you, honey? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's in an enchanted forest, abundant in squirrels and cute little duckies and... What? <laughs> I know you ain't talking about the swamp. Donkey. Now we'll break down the video and learn key vocabulary. Uh. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Better out than in, I always say, eh, Fiona? <laughs> Better is the comparative form of good. It usually describes something that's a preferable choice. Like, I like the painting better than the drawing. So you would use this primarily when comparing two things. Out means to release or let go. And in means inside the body in this context. So better out than in is a funny and casual way of saying it's better to release something like gas or a burp from your body instead of keeping it inside. Here, Shrek is saying letting out the burp is more comfortable even if it's considered impolite or gross to do that at the dinner table. If this ever happens to you while eating at the table, you can say excuse me to sound polite. Uh. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> better out than in I always say, eh Fiona? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, I guess not. Good means something is of high quality or enjoyable, like, wow, that pizza was good. One refers to the comment or joke that was just made. So altogether, good one is a phrase used to compliment someone on a clever or funny comment they made. For instance, if you're laughing at a joke someone said, you can say good one to let them know you thought it was funny. That's good. <laughs> uh, I guess not. What do you mean not on the list? Don't tell me you don't know who I am. A list is items or names written down, typically one below the other. Like here's my grocery list for food I need to buy at the supermarket today. It's really common in American culture to have lists for parties or clubs where only people whose names are on the list are allowed to come into the party. Sometimes this is known as the VIP list or very important person list. If you want to know more about acronyms, check out this video here. So you'd go to the party entrance and they'd see if your name is on the list to be let into the party. Back to our clip. Donkey is trying to come to the fancy dinner and someone is telling him he is not on the list so he can't come. What do you mean not on the list? Don't tell me you don't know who I am. <laughs> hey, what's happening everybody? Thanks for waiting. Everybody is a way to address a group of people, meaning all the people present. It's like saying everyone or all of you. So the phrase, what's happening, everybody, is a casual and friendly way to ask a group of people what they are doing or what is going on. Some other similar phrases you can use are, what's up, guys? How's it going? Or how is everyone? Hey, hey, hey. what's happening, everybody? Thanks for waiting. You know, I had the hardest time finding this place. Hardest is a superlative form of the adjective hard. So we use it with something that requires a great deal of work or effort. For instance, math is the hardest subject for me meaning math is more difficult for me than English, history, or science. Finding means to discover something after searching. So the whole phrase, the hardest time finding, means it was very challenging or tough to discover something. In this case, the location of where the dinner was at. Some similar phrases for hardest time are difficult time or the informal version, tough time. You know, I had the hardest time finding this place. No, no, bad donkey, bad, down. No, 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 dad, dad, it's all right, it's all right, he's with us. He helped rescue me from the dragon. The word rescue here refers to saving someone from a dangerous or distressing situation. Like in a lot of action movies, they try to rescue someone who's in trouble. 
some synonyms are save or free. In the first Shrek movie, Shrek and Donkey went on a journey to rescue Fiona from a tower where she was locked in and guarded by a dragon. So in this scene, Fiona's dad doesn't know that this donkey is their friend. He thinks it's just a random animal. But Fiona tells him that the donkey is her friend and he can have dinner with them. No, 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 dad, dad, it's all right, it's all right, he's with us. He helped rescue me from the dragon. Yep, that's me, the noble Steve. Noble means someone of high class. For instance, a king is noble. But in this context, noble has an alternate meaning. It means having high moral qualities or showing great respect. For instance, that policeman is noble. And steed is an old-fashioned term for a horse. So when Donkey calls himself a noble steed, he is saying he's a loyal and honorable animal that someone rides like a horse. Yep, that's me, the noble steed. Hey, waiter, how about a bowl for the steed? Oh, boy. The phrase, how about, is a casual and friendly way to make a suggestion or offer an alternative idea. It's like saying, what do you think of this idea? Or, would you like to try this instead? For instance, how about we go to the beach on Saturday? You're asking someone if they think going to the beach on Saturday sounds like a good idea. Alternatively, for suggestions, you can also use let's, for instance, let's go to the beach. The phrase, oh boy, is an informal way to express surprise, excitement, or even slight worry, depending on the context and the tone the speaker uses it. For instance, in an excited tone, like, oh boy, I'm excited for a concert tomorrow. The speaker is excited for the concert tomorrow. But here, Shrek says it like, oh boy, which means he's a little embarrassed by Donkey and worried how the rest of the dinner will go. You can also say, oh man, or oh no. Hey waiter, how about a bowl for the steam? Oh boy. Um, Shrek. Yeah? Oh, sorry. Great soup, Mrs. Q. Mmm. <laughs> yeah? is a casual way of asking someone to clarify or repeat what they just said, often used when you're not sure if you agree with them or not. It can also be used to prompt someone to provide more information. For instance, I really like Harry Potter. Yeah? Yeah, it's my favorite book. The second speaker is asking the first speaker to clarify their statement. Um, Shrek. Yeah? Oh, sorry. Great soup, Mrs. Q. Mmm. <laughs> no, no, no. Dolly. Oh! <laughs> mm, yeah. Darling is a term of endearment often used to address a loved one or a close friend. Other terms of endearment are honey, sweetie, or babe. Honey and sweetie can be used for close relationships or family, but you really only use babe for romantic partners. So here, Fiona is trying to tell Shrek it's not soup, it's just water for washing your hands, and he seems a bit confused and embarrassed. Mm. No, no, no. Darling. Oh! <laughs> Mm, yeah. So, Fiona, tell us about where you live. Well, Shrek owns his own land. <laughs> Don't you, honey? Owns is a verb that means that he possesses or has control over something. Like he owns two cars or he owns land. But when Fiona says own the second time in this sentence, it means something completely different. She's using the adjective form of own, which is used with the possessive to emphasize that something belongs to the person. For instance, he makes his own money, meaning he makes money by himself, not with the help of his parents or someone else. Honey literally is a sticky golden substance made by bees. It tastes great on toast, but that's not what Fiona means here. Just like I talked about in the last point with Darling, honey is a term of endearment. Well, Shrek owns his own land. <laughs> Don't you, honey? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's in an enchanted forest, abundant in squirrels and cute little duckies. And enchanted is a word used to describe something that has been given special powers, usually through magic or a spell. It's a very common word in fairy tales, like the enchanted bird could talk to us. A forest is a large area covered with trees and plants. So when you put them together for enchanted forest, it refers to a magical or mystical woodland area. It's a common setting in fairy tales and fantasy stories where exciting and magical adventures take place. The word abundant means that there is a large amount or plenty of something. For instance, fish are abundant in the ocean. Abundant is a word that you normally hear natives swap out in daily conversations for words like large, generous, or overflowing. Like, there's a large number of students at this school. Or, that's a generous donation. Or even, there's too much water, it's overflowing. Duckies is a cute and playful way to say ducks by adding the I-E-S suffix. It's quite common in informal English to add the suffix I-E-S to make the word sound more friendly, especially for baby animals. 
like kitties instead of kittens or piggies instead of piglets. It's also common in informal English to do this to shorten words like selfie for self-portrait or normie for normal. So here, Shrek is being very ironic because he in fact does not live in a place like this. Using ironic phrases is super common in English because they perfectly describe a situation, but most of the time their meanings are not literal so it can be confusing and easy to get lost. That's why I recommend learning English with FluentU, an effective app that teaches you English through real world videos. The interactive subtitles on FluentU give you context specific definitions, never literal translations. So if we hover over the word rescue here, we see one context specific definition for this word, the act of saving someone from a dangerous situation. If we click on it, we get not just the definition, but also video examples that demonstrate how the word is used in all different contexts. Just for the record, being adrift in space with zero promise of rescue is more fun than it sounds. You can learn just like this with thousands of videos like movie scenes, TED Talks, and music videos, as well as personalized quizzes and speaking questions that help you master English. You can try it all for free by signing up for a two-week trial using the link in the description below. Plus, FluentU is currently having a sale, so now's a great time to check it out. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's in an enchanted forest, abundant in squirrels and cute little duckies and- What? <laughs> I know you ain't talking about the swamp. Donkey. Ain't is a contraction of am not, is not, or are not. It's extremely informal and is actually an incorrect contraction, even though it's quite common depending on where you live in the US. For instance, I ain't going to dinner tonight. Talking is just talking, but with a dropped G at the end. It's very common in English to drop the G in verbs that end in ing to sound more casual, like singing, eating, or driving. So ain't talking is a casual and informal way of literally saying, I am not talking or I do not want to talk. But here it's a little different. Donkey is saying it more as a lighthearted statement, saying there's no way he's describing the swamp with that statement about the enchanted forest and squirrels and duckies. The word swamp literally refers to an area of wet, muddy, and waterlogged land. Swamps are often associated with being dirty and unpleasant, not often a place someone would choose to live. The word swamp can form the adjective swamped and be used metaphorically to describe a situation that is overwhelming or difficult to manage. For example, you could say I'm swamped with work if you have a lot of tasks to complete and are feeling overwhelmed. What? <laughs> I know you ain't talking about the swamp. Donkey, an ogre from a swamp. Oh, how original. An ogre refers to a large, frightening, and ugly mythical creature that's often found in fairy tales and stories. Shrek is an ogre, but anyone who has seen the movies knows he's not scary, he's a lovable guy. Original means something new, fresh, or inventive, like the original Netflix series Stranger Things, which means the show Stranger Things is a new show only on Netflix. So normally when you say how original, it's a compliment, meaning it's something you've never seen before and it's very unique. But when you say, how original, in a sarcastic tone, it actually implies the opposite, that something is unoriginal or very common. And this is how Harold is using it here. He doesn't really think an ogre living in a swamp is unique or creative. It's exactly where he would expect an ogre to live. If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming videos like Learn English with Rick and Morty. An ogre from a swamp, oh, how original. Well, I suppose that would be a fine place to raise the children. Suppose means to assume or guess, like I suppose we'll eat dinner at 5 p.m., meaning there isn't an exact time. The speaker is just guessing they'll eat at 5 p.m. Similar expressions include I assume or I guess. Raise the children refers to taking care of kids and helping them grow into adults. So Lillian is literally saying that based on how Shrek described the swamp where they live, it would be a great place to have children and grow their family. But she has a slight tone of sarcasm here, which means she really doesn't think it's a great place to raise a family. Well, I suppose that would be a fine place to raise the children. <laughs> it's a bit early to be thinking about that, isn't it? Indeed. <laughs> a bit is a casual way of saying a little or somewhat. It's a common expression used to indicate a small amount of something, like it's a bit cold outside today, meaning it's a little bit cold. Some synonyms are tad and smidge, like it's a tad cold outside, or can you add a smidge of salt to the soup? Early in this context means that something has taken place before the expected time. It can be used to describe arriving before the planned time or completing a task ahead of schedule. 
in this case, having children. When Shrek says it's a bit early to be thinking about raising children, he means it is too soon in his and Fiona's relationship to have that conversation. He wants to wait. Indeed is a polite and formal way to confirm or agree with what has been said. It adds emphasis to the statement and can be replaced with words like certainly or absolutely. For instance, do you want to go to the beach this weekend? Indeed. You certainly want to make sure you remember all these fun expressions and vocabulary words, so make sure to download our free PDF review guide using the link in the description. <laughs> it's a bit early to be thinking about that, isn't it? Indeed. <laughs> I just started eating. Harold, what's that supposed to mean? Supposed means intended or expected, like you are supposed to be at work. Mean in this context refers to the intended message or the point someone is trying to make. It's similar to definition or intention. For instance, ask your teacher what does this mean when you see a word that you don't know in class, and your teacher will tell you the meaning or definition. So the phrase, what's that supposed to mean, is often used when a person doesn't understand the intention behind someone else's statement, or thinks there might be a hidden message. Shrek feels like Harold is being sarcastic, critical, or implying something without saying it directly, which he totally is. Harold is being quite rude here, saying it's disgusting to think about Shrek and Fiona having kids because they're ogres and he doesn't want to discuss it while he eats. I just started eating. Harold! What's that supposed to mean? Dad, it's great, okay? Well, for his type, yes. My type? Type means a category or a group of people or things that have something in common. For instance, you can ask, what type of food do you like? And someone will respond with a category of food, like Italian or Mexican. Some synonyms are sort and kind, like that sort of car or this kind of tree. But here, Harold is using this to refer to Shrek's type of people, ogres. So he's insulting him by saying for an ogre standard, it's okay, but for a human standard, it's not. Well, for his type, yes. My type? Uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Dinner is served. Never mind, I can hold it. Served in this context means that something has been given or provided by someone, usually in a formal or polite manner. It's often used when talking about food or drinks at a restaurant. For instance, breakfast is served every morning at 8 a.m. Hold means to keep something in a certain state while it refers to the action or situation that needs to be stopped. So Donkey says hold it here to say he won't go to the bathroom, he will keep his business inside of him for now. It can also be used to ask someone to wait or stop. For instance, you can say hold it when a bus is leaving and you need to get on. So here, Donkey is making a joke because he was going to go to the bathroom to avoid Shrek and King Harold's awkward argument. But since the food is ready, he is just going to eat instead. Now, let's test your knowledge and watch the clip without subtitles. Uh. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Better out than in, I always say, eh, Fiona? <laughs> 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 That's good. <laughs> uh. I guess not. What do you mean, not on the list? Don't tell me you don't know who I am. Oh, hey! What's happening, everybody? Thanks for waiting. You know, I had the hardest time finding this place. No, no, bad donkey, bad, down. No, 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 dad, dad, it's all right, it's all right, he's with us. He helped rescue me from the dragon. Yep, that's me, the noble Steve. Hey, waiter, how about a bowl for the Steve? Oh, boy. Um, Shrek. Yeah? Oh, sorry. Great soup, Mrs. Q. Mmm. <laughs> no, 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 Polly. Oh. <laughs> mm, yeah. So, Fiona, tell us about where you live. Well, Shrek owns his own land. <laughs> Don't you, honey? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's in an enchanted forest, abundant in squirrels and cute little duckies and... What? <laughs> I know you ain't talking about the swamp. Donkey, an ogre from a swamp. Oh, how original. Well, I suppose that will be a fine place to raise the children. <laughs> it's a bit early to be thinking about that, isn't it? Indeed. I just started eating. Harold! What's that supposed to mean? Dad, it's great, okay? Well, for his type, yes. My type? I gotta go to the bathroom. Dinner is served. Never mind, I can hold it. Let's keep learning practical English words and phrases with cartoons by breaking down this hilarious scene from The Simpsons where Bart and Lisa break into school and they uncover a surprising secret. I'll see you over there.